we Patrick, have... is it, it's marching, marching, marching. March Inc. Um, if you just say March in ink, like in a pen, really fast, that's good enough. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> make sure I'm correct. Thank you. Leslie, nice seeing you again. Looks like we have folks coming on in. Um, we'll give everybody just a few seconds to get through the virtual door here since we've opened it up. Um, hello, everyone. Just give us a few seconds to make sure all of our participants can get in here this morning. All right, it looks like it's slowed down. So Commissioner Shattuck McNally, go ahead. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Michelle. I appreciate it. Um, welcome, everyone. I am Lamar County Commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally, Commissioner for District 3, uh, the first woman to ever hold this seat. And I'm very proud to have earned the uh, trust of the voters and have this opportunity to serve you all as your commissioner. And I'm glad to start off um, our first community conversations and commissioners event for the Estes Park and Estes Valley area. I, um, as you may know, I was born and raised in Northern Colorado and been coming up to Estes Park and Rocky Mountain um, National Park every year of my life since I was born, even as an infant sitting on a picnic table in Endo Valley. And I continue to come up um, every month or more often in the summer because I like to hike 100 miles in Rocky um, every, every year, if, if not more than that. And I just want to uh, thank you all for joining. This is the first of our conversations. It may not be always this format, but I, um, I'm looking for input and we wanna just to kind of get rolling because there's a lot of information and a lot of things changing in the county. And I'd like to introduce my guests today. Um, first, I'd like to welcome um, Larimer County Commissioner John Cafals, who is our board chair for this year and thank him for joining us today. I'd like to also, I'm very excited to uh, have as our special guest, uh, Mayor Pro Tem of the town of Estes, Patrick Marching, and uh, really grateful that he could join us today. And I'm looking forward to hearing from him. And again, I'd like to, um, Leslie, you're gonna have to make sure I get this title, but Leslie Ellis, who is, um, I, I, I'm trying to think of your official title of the planning and um, community development um, um, department. And uh, I brought, I asked her to come today to ask, uh, be here in case we have any technical questions. Leslie, could you give me your official title so I make sure I have it correct? I apologize. Yes, no, no problem. You're very close. Community Development Director. Thank right. you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I knew it was director, but I thought, which, make sure I have that correct. So um, first, I just want to welcome you all to be here today. We're going to start off with this kind of format. Um, I'm going to let Michelle kind of give you uh, the pros and um, our kind of our etiquette of, of, of our, our Zoom event here. And, um, and then I will kind of just do a, a brief overview of some of the things that have been happening. And, um, and then I was gonna let uh, the Mayor Pro Tem give an update for himself and then um, Commissioner um, Kafalas, I think he has some things he'd like to share, especially about the climate smart um, uh, Larimer County uh, framework that we've been working on that he has laid the foundation and worked very hard on. I'd like to make sure um, that you know um, what's rolling out. And then we'll take some questions. I know it's a quick hour, um, but I wanna value your time. And so um, Michelle, I'll let you kind of give us the, the uh, protocols. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Good morning, good afternoon, I should say, everybody. My name is Michelle Bird. I'm the Public Affairs Director here at Lamar County. Um, today, I'm your Zoom host. So that makes me part IT, part facilitator. Um, and I want to talk just very briefly about how you can um, engage today. It, the, the title of the meeting is, a, there is conversation in there. So we do want you guys to engage even though we are on a virtual platform. Um, there's actually two types of ways that you can start engaging with us. Um, one is the Q&A box. So if you look down below, normally in a, a normal Zoom meeting that probably you guys are all used to, you're used to seeing a chat box. Here you'll see a Q&A box. So go ahead, if at any point you have questions you wanna type into the Q&A box, just go ahead and do it. Um, and we'll get to those and we'll answer those live. If you actually wanna to talk to us, you know, like real people talk to each other face to face, we can make that happen too. Um, just click the raise hand button. That lets me know that you wanna chat with us and I'll walk you through the steps to get you unmuted and, and talking to us. So it's pretty simple. Um, but please, you know, we, we encourage you to engage today and, and ask us your questions and um, let us know how you feel. So with that, I'll go back to you, Commissioner. 
Thanks, Michelle. And I, I do um, want to thank you for helping facilitate this today. It helps me be able to focus on the uh, participants and their questions, and, and it's really a big help. So thank you for that. And thanks to Baby Yoda for joining us as well. We want to, he's fun to have. So thank you. Um, again, um, thank you all for being here. Um, we have uh, had a busy, um, it's just been a little over 30 days since I was sworn in. And we have done a lot of work and uh, very excited for a lot of the progress, but we still have a lot of work to do. Um, there's a lot of things um, facing as challenges, but I think there are opportunities for our county between the COVID response vaccines, as well as our, our recovery from the wildfire. And we have economic um, things to think about because of the pandemic, as well as all the other things that are happening in our county. And so I, I want to just say again, at, at the end of this, I'm hoping Michelle will have a quick little survey um, that we will just want to, um, that we're asking for your input of how you'd like to have these. Um, in the past, um, Commissioner, the former Commissioner Donnelly um, would have these every other month, but um, I'm open to having these once a month or how, what kind of format. And I'm hoping here in the future, I'll be able to come up and take a great hike and then have a community conversation and uh, maybe, uh, we all have a cup of coffee. I don't know how this is going to look, but we'd like to make sure it's something that you find that you can participate in. And we'll kind of we'll kind of develop that as we go along. A couple of things I'd like to share is we did have our Cameron Peak wildfire, our first uh, wildfire recovery um, forum last night, which I found very informative. And um, so that is was recorded, Michelle, correct? And so that will be online. So I'm hoping that it's not now, but it will be. No. And so I'm hoping that that you'll be able to find um, helpful for information so you can share with your neighbors and friends. Another thing I'd like to share with is the vaccine progress. Um, I do want to share that I heard from the health director that it sounds like all of the um, early childhood and that Estes Park Health um, helped educate, uh, vaccinate, vaccinate 253 educators, which include all of the 14 Estes Park School District um, schools and Eagle Rock School and all the child care. We got all of those folks vaccinated this past weekend and that's great news so that our educators can be protected and taken care of as they're, we're trying to get uh, children back in the classrooms. I also know they had a clinic um, that uh, lots of volunteers and kudos to all the volunteers. I think a couple of you are on this call today to help um, vaccinate older adults over the age of 70. And, and the other special residents. I think that was 400 in that one day the week be, uh, before. Um, so that's exciting. Last week in Larimer, we, um, last Tuesday, they vaccinated 1,100 folks um, over um, one day. Um, and that was uh, over 70. And we're still working to get through that list. If you have know of folks, I need your help reaching out to folks who may not have the internet or have access or computer access. Michelle will hopefully put that number in the chat. It's 970-498-5500. And that is for folks who need to call in because they don't have access to a computer or are struggling to get into um, uh, the system. And we wanna make sure that you have access and that you have your questions answered and you will be able to access a person um, and talk to them. Also, there are some new um, programs that were just launched this week. Um, that if you have a transportation barrier, I'm not sure of the, the incomplete access we have in Estes Park, but I know they're looking at that. So make sure you mention to those folks when you sign up for those um, appointments that you have a transportation barrier or challenge, and we might be able to see if we can help find you a ride. Thanks, Michelle, for providing that resource. Um, another thing that um, we're asking for your particip uh, participation and input is the housing survey, which is open and through the end of this month. Um, and I believe, right, um, Commissioner Kafas and uh, Michelle will put that in. And that is a, a important for us to get feedback from all stakeholders as, uh, as stakeholders through all demographic groups and rural, unincorporated, city, Mountain, we want everyone's feedback on this housing survey. We're gonna use that data for us to um, use for achieving our strategic goal number one, which Commissioner Cavallis is the goal steward. And um, he has been working on this for the last couple of years. This is the strategic plan from 2019 to 2023. And that goal, um, those goals are to work towards um, attainable and affordable housing, looking at childcare and workforce housing. And um, that goal, there's a whole list of things in that goal. And he is the steward for that goal. And I will be the steward for goal number one, 
um, which will look at infrastructure and um, um, in broadband throughout the county and things like that. And that's a whole nother conversation we can have another day when we, we're getting an update on that goal on Monday in the work session. And you can watch that live or, or watch, go back and watch it recorded. And that is, um, um, Michelle can maybe put up that link on the Board of County Commissioners where you can watch our work sessions. We're trying to be transparent and accessible. Um, there's lots I could talk about. Um, I don't want to take up the whole time. I want to give some time to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Marching and um, also Commissioner Gafalls. And then I want to hear from you. And then I also have Leslie here to ask any, uh, answer any questions you uh, might have. Um, I know there's some of you might have some questions about um, the comprehensive plan. So um, I'm going to turn it over now really quick to Mayor Marching. And thank you again for being here today. Thank you very much, Commissioner Shaq McNally. I just wanted to say a quick thank you uh, to you and Larimer County for hosting this event and reaching out. Uh, I'm glad I was able to fill in for Mayor Wendy Koenig. Um, uh, I do have the good fortune to serve as the Mayor Pro Tem here in Estes Park. Um, and hopefully I could provide you with an update on the happenings in Estes. Um, I, I put together a list in preparation for this um, and, and reached out to a couple of town staff to kind of help me out if needed with technical um, support or technical information. Uh, I just want to let you know that Jason Damweber is currently an attendee. He is the SS Park um, Assistant Town Administrator and then Randy Hunt is also here with us. He's the SS Park Community Development Director. So I don't know if you would um, want to elevate them to uh, panelists. Um, it looks like you already are, <laughs> um, but I might be leaning on them uh, for some help later. Um, so I'll jump into a, an update here and ask this. Um, feel free to jump in at any time and cut me off. Um, as far as uh, sales taxes go here at Finestas, we, we managed to, um, I guess, withstand the brunt of the pandemic. I know we're still in the throes of it, but we, we did relatively well overall. We saw a 7.41% decline over our 2019 uh, sales tax collections, which all things considered is, is good. Um, it's certainly better than what we initially anticipated back in March of last year. Um, our COVID case numbers up here in Estes Park, we've had approximately 523 confirmed probable cases of the uh, of Larimer County's total 18,813 total cases. So um, we are quite small um, in our population compared to Larimer County and our COVID numbers reflect that. Interestingly enough, we had um, significant visitation to Estes um, despite the pandemic and we were able to keep our, our numbers relatively low. Um, so that's a very good thing. Um, next up, Rocky Mountain National Park, at least at this time, uh, from what I understand, will not be implementing the reservation system. I'm not here to speak on their behalf, but it's something that's gonna impact us greatly. Um, and I'm sure it will you as well, uh, uh, commissioners, if you are planning on coming up here and trying to get those 100 miles in. So um, just something to take into consideration uh, as you're uh, traveling up into Estes Park. Uh, another thing that you need to be aware of is that uh, this will be the first year that Estes Park will be implementing seasonal paid parking. And so on May 28th of this year, seasonal paid parking will begin um, and that uh, will continue through October 17th this year. And that's at a rate of about $2, or not about, uh, $2 per hour from the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Paid parking is only being implemented in about 30% of the town's overall parking supply. But of that 30%, 67% of that, or I'm sorry, 67% of our downtown parking supply is included in that. So 70, uh, there's a lot of percentages here and feel free to get lost in those numbers, but 70% of our parking uh, total or parking um, spaces are gonna be remain free. Um, we do have an app available that people can access as they're coming into town to find out where available resources are, available um, uh, parking spaces are. And we try to update that as much as we can in real time, uh, which is kind of difficult, but. 
Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, the parking structure that you see as you're coming into town uh, will remain free. So I would say play it safe, just go straight to the parking structure. There's over 400 spaces there and it is usually uh, able to um, uh, uh, house, it, it rarely gets all the way filled up. Um, so uh, downtown Estes Park Loop, uh, the loop construction has been postponed uh, an additional year and will not is not currently scheduled to begin until 2022 and be completed in 2023. Um, if you are not familiar with this project, there is information available on the website, both town and um, I think federal, the downtown Estes Park Loop project. Um, it is going on about 10 years. So if you haven't heard of it, I don't know where you are hanging out, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it is, uh, like I said, postponed an additional year. Um, as I was doing a little bit of research, I thought it'd be interesting to just mention that we are reviewing our stormwater master plan. Again, uh, this is something that the county has been a partner on in the past. And I imagine that it'll pop back up on your radars again in the future. Nessus Park Town Board is going to be having additional study sessions regarding the stormwater master plan and potential funding mechanisms, including user fees, grants, and possible sales tax initiatives in the future. And there's going to be more to come on that, but it's certainly a hot button issue, um, whether it be uh, tax initiatives um, or, or user fees, uh, stormwater fees are not free. and um, our storm stormwater um, uh, infrastructure projects aren't ultimately free. Sorry, my mouse just uh, ran out of batteries. Um, and so um, I'm happy that that's being brought back up to this new board. The previous board and previous board of county commissioners discussed it fairly um, at length. Uh, so it will be good to have a new set of eyes on that to see uh, um, what everybody thinks about it. Next is um, oh workforce housing initiatives. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, projects under construction already up here. The wildfire homes construction has started uh, when uh, that is built out, which is estimated to take three to five years. That'll add um, 88 uh, workforce housing units to the Estes Valley to support our community. It's a total, it's a mixed use uh, project in total. It'll have, I believe, 128 total units uh, mixed between single family townhome condominium style style units. The Peakview development is an Estes Park Housing Authority development, which is 26 apartments all dedicated to workforce housing for our workforce here in the Valley. Um, and then the town of Estes Park will be um, releasing an RFP shortly, um, uh, looking for proposals for the town owned fish hatchery property. Uh, promise I only have two left and I'll turn the mic back over to you. Uh, vacation home re uh, registrations, the final deadline for vac vacation homes um, to complete final inspections and receive their certificate of occupancy is coming up at the end of March, uh, specifically March 31st. Uh, meeting this deadline is required in order to maintain your vacation home registration. If um, you don't, you are liable to lose your registration and that uh, permit will be um, moving on to the next person in the current queue or wait list. And so if people out there are listening and they are currently vacation home um, operators or owners, make sure you are um, keeping up with that. The last thing, of course, which I'm sure, I'm sure this is gonna come up later is um, the comprehensive plan process. The long awaited comprehensive plan process is uh, underway. Uh, it's begun with the official release of the RFP um, and very good news that the town was awarded um, a $150,000 grant to help fund that plan, which is fantastic. Um, and I know that um, a lot of uh, people are interested in the comprehensive plan because the Estes Valley is uh, uh, a very unique place. And we don't want to make, I always say, you know, it's not a comprehensive plan if it's not comprehensive. Uh, so we want to make sure that Estes Valley residents know all Estes Valley residents, not just um, town of Estes Park residents know that this is a plan uh, for our entire Estes Valley. 
Um, that has been echoed multiple times by the entirety of uh, uh, our town board past and present. Um, so I'm looking forward to that process beginning. It is long overdue. And I certainly hope that um, our county partners are as excited as we are in moving forward with that. So thank you very much for that time. Hopefully I did not make anybody fall asleep. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> no, that's all great information. Thank you so much. And, of course. Uh, and, and thank you for being here today. And I know you're filling in for Mayor Wendy because uh, she wasn't able to take, uh, be joining us today, but I'm hoping you'll attend in the, in the future because um, it's great to build these partnerships. And I look forward, and I'm, I'm sure Commissioner Kafals uh, agrees with me, we're looking forward to um, getting to know each other and, and building a really strong relationship um, between the county, Board of County Commissioners and the Town Board of Estes. So, um, Great information. I'm sure there'll be questions, but I'm going to let uh, Commissioner Kufalis, um speak. Um, I know I, I'm hoping he'll bring up the Climate Smart Larimer County and some other things. So, Commissioner Kafalis, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And actually, Jody, with, if it's all right with you, I'd just like to hold off a little bit and, and see if folks have specific questions about what the Mayor Pro Tem is, you know, some of the issues that he's brought up. And, and, um, and, I, and if they have specific questions about the, the Climate Smart Larimer County Framework Initiative. I'm happy to respond to that, but I, I'm going to just step back and continue to listen and see if folks have questions or comments, and, and then I can chime in if you'd like me to, Jody. Sure. I was just I'm just over here pulling up some things from my other computer so I can um, look at the websites as I'm talking with folks. So, sure, we can. Uh, we have about a, a little a half hour and I want to leave some time at the end for the survey. So um, sure, that would be great, uh, Commissioner. I'm just um, grateful for your, your attendance today and, and uh, coming up uh, um, and being here. Well, not coming up, but joining our town uh, event. So uh, Michelle, I guess if, do we have any hands raised or any people to ask questions? Actually, we just do have a hand raised. We have a few hands raised. So great. We're going to start Tom first. Well, so Tom Keck. Looks like you, it looks, Tom, like you're using an older version of Zoom. I'm gonna have to promote you to panelist in order for you to talk. So um, you're gonna come back as a panelist and you just need to unmute yourself, Tom. You see the unmute button? I'll, I'll see if I can help you. You're going to have to. There you go. Can you hear, okay, us can you hear me? Can, can yeah. you hear me? Go ahead. Go ahead. So my question is, given the, the current weather events, I actually said a little background since we, you know, we live in Estes, but we had to evacuate and we evacuated to Oklahoma and we decided to stay here to get our pandemic shots and, and et cetera. So we're still there. And so we're, we're very much aware of the power, the electrical power difficulties Oklahoma and Texas have experienced in this, in this uh, remarkable extended cold spell. And, and one of the things that came out of that is um, understanding that uh, uh, Texas is having severe problems because of natural gas supply problems. And uh, also uh, they're, they have, a, Oklahoma and Texas both have a lot of wind energy uh, but as I've learned that their wind turbines, they did not, because of this relatively southern location, they did not spend the money to get extra uh, optional package on the wind turbines to prevent icing, to prevent for cold weather operation. So my questions are for, for uh, uh, us are, does anybody know or can they find out from PRPA um, about those questions? So I know we advocated for... Uh, instead of buying a gas peaker plant uh, to buy bath storage, but PRPA went ahead and, and signed a contract, I think, to buy a gas peaker plant. Well, that will be susceptible to the same kind of natural gas supply problems that have been experienced down here during the kind of cold weather uh, that uh, Oklahoma and Texas have experienced in this. And, and similarly, so the questions are, maybe try to encourage PRP to revisit that decision given the, the new developments and to find out if they the, the wind turbines that PRPA, not only the wind turbines that PRP owns, but they buy a lot of wind power from Wyoming. And do, do all the wind turbines basically providing power to Larimer County, do they have that winterization option so that they won't uh, go out of service in an ice storm, severe ice storm like the, 
is experienced here down here. So that's my questions about uh, concern about the electrical supply reliability uh, for Larimer County. Thanks, Tom. I think those are great questions. I think uh, the current news events are always are all on our minds as we watch those in Texas uh, dealing with some unusual circumstances. And I'm hoping um, those residents are. Um, I think it's they're working hard to resolve that. I do. I do think. Um, that's a question I will have to um, see if I can reach out and ask those questions. And I'm sure Michelle will help me um, find the appropriate people. And then I can, um, if your emails are in this um, system, then I can email that back to everyone. And so we'll kind of get an email sent back to all the attendees today. And I can see if we can get those questions answered. I'm, I'm assuming, you know, Wyoming's pretty pr um, used to uh, severe weather. Um, I have some relatives who live out on wide open spaces in Wyoming. And they're all on electric and uh, wind power. And uh, they have it. Uh, so I will also ask my family that lives up there. And they have uh, quite the electronics and way they monitor their power and the peaks and stuff. And they actually uh, live right across the you know, pasture spans from some of those wind turbines that are um, using for that area. So the reason I mention that is because I, I do know my, my relatives are pretty well versed in that. So I'll ask them that as well and see what they have to say. But, um, and uh, I'll, I'll find some information and get back to you on that. And I'm hoping that uh, you're safe and well and where you're at. And I'm glad to hear you were, you've been vaccinated. Yes, uh, that's right. We, uh, we got our vaccines uh, much earlier here. I think we would have gotten them in Colorado. Estes Park just recently called to ask me about the vaccination. I said, no, we got our first vaccination six weeks ago, the second one two weeks ago. So uh, <laughs> we're done. That's great to hear. Well, if that's all right with you, I will find out some answers and then I will email back uh, you. And and uh, if, unless you don't want to, I'll, back, I'll email back everybody on this call. And oh, that's fine. And again, I want to emphasize about the the, the gas peaker plant too. I mean, that that uh, it, that was kind of brought. I mean, I think PRPA views that as reliable. And I might have thought so previously, but after seeing how severe cold uh, can disrupt the natural gas supply, which is what happened throughout Oklahoma and Texas, and and so that's that's the susceptible and it's much more likely to happen, you know, in Colorado than it is in Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, so they, I really wish they would maybe some input to try to revision that and, 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 and solve the, the load issue with a storage by bringing in inner storage. It could be batteries. It could be uh, pumped hydro. It could be gravitational potential energy storage, but so, so, some significant amount of electrical storage or, or not storage, to handle the peak issues, and that those won't be as susceptible to the weather effects as the natural gas will be. And, and Tom, John Kafalos, I just on the storage, um, uh, you know, thing that you raise, uh, PRPA is definitely investing a lot of resources and looking at the current technology and future technologies related to uh, large scale um, energy, you know, battery storage, and they already have. A, um, a battery storage unit out there. I forget how, what the capacity is, but they obviously need to expand that capacity. So they are looking at those kinds of perhaps more resilient backup systems. Well, uh, that's good to hear. But the, the, I raised this issue at a, at a town hall meeting that PRP had a year or so ago in Estes and asking a point about the adjacent power supplier for uh, Longmont, right in near I-25 I there at Longmont. They have a large Tesla uh, battery storage. And I asked if anybody at PRPA had visited that, looked into it, was familiar with it. And the answer was no, nobody at PPR at that time had bothered just to go down the I-25 a few miles to, to, to learn about that existing uh, large battery facility that that, the, I don't remember the name of the utility provides Longmont that they put in. Okay. And just a fun fact here, uh, one of my sons is in graduate school at CU Boulder, and this is what he's doing. His PhD program is exactly what you just talked about. So um, I also will be, you know, for whatever he can share, because I guess some of the stuff he's doing with the government contract, he can't talk about, but this is some of the things that he's doing his PhD on. So um, I'll, I'll see what I can ferret out for future um, possibilities for battery storage as well. So thank you so thanks much for that question. Thank you, Judy. All right. And also, so, I just wanted to know real quick, Michelle, but I just wanted to kind of see if anybody knew my background is from the Estes Valley, but anybody recognized my background, so. 
we'll see if anybody, chat. you guys, if you know what it is, you can put it in the Q and A portion. Q and A. All yes, right. It's so my, it is my phone. Oh, Jody, you you muted yourself. Well, I just want to make sure everyone knows I'm not copying anybody's photo. It's actually my own personal photo. So, because nice. I know there's so many great photographers in Estes Park. So. There is. So let's go. Michael's had his hand up for a while. So Michael, I am going to, um, I'm going to hold on just a second. Allow you to talk. So you're just going to have to unmute yourself. And while you're doing that, Sylvia had a guess of Lily Lake. Is Lily Lake, right? We're getting a nod. Yes, Sylvia, you were the winner. Michael, are you there? I am. Go ahead. Judy, I want to thank you for holding this meeting. I find this interesting and I hope you continue. My question is directed to Patrick and, and or his associates. And I'm wondering if you can give us any more detail about the involvement of the non-citizens in the Valley, the non-Estes citizens, when they might get involved and what kind of role they would play and when those sorts of things might start happening. Thank you, Michael. Good to hear from you. Hope you're doing well, by the way. Thank you. I am. Um, Randy, I'm probably going to have you jump in on this one, but I would imagine, Michael, uh, Estes Valley residents or unincorporated residents will probably be brought into this right when uh, uh, residents of Estes Park are. Um, the timing is, uh, the timetable really is still um, not not firm yet. Uh, as far as the comprehensive plan moving forward. But like I said, before I put my foot in my mouth, I'm gonna have commission, or I'm sorry, uh, community development director uh, Hunt jump in. Thank you all. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and commissioners. Um, I'm glad to answer that question. Although we don't have firm dates yet, we do have a generalized uh, approach to this. So by way of background, I'll mention that we're um, soliciting proposals now for a consultant, and that will include the public engagement part of the comprehensive plan. The overall time frame will run from what we expect to be a launch date on April 15th or 16th this year, a couple of months from now, through the end of 2022. Um, the exact number of mail they'll be held and uh, what that will we work with our consultants some more, but we do want to engage all kinds of platforms to engage the maximum number of stakeholders that we can. Uh, at this point, I expect uh, with the pandemic being willing to accommodate it or end of the pandemic, we'll have in-person meetings. That probably will not be till later on. Uh, as we all know, we're not quite out of the woods yet on that, but uh, uh, surely by the uh, 2022 time frame, we'll be able to resume in-person meetings. Uh, we'll probably have meetings like this, uh, Zoom or equivalent, for some input. Um, we're looking at, and we'll talk to our consultants about whether, in the, at least in the warm weather months, we can have in-person meetings, socially distanced for the time being, outdoors. There's uh, a lot of nice uh, advantages to doing that in Estes. So uh, we'll look at large venues where people can spread out a bit, but uh, be able to, um, to interact. Um, you had asked about citizens, non-citizens, and I do want to stress that our approach is going to be to involve as many folks as possible without regard to whether they're town residents, county residents, uh, business owners, uh, folks who are working in Estes, but not necessarily resident, uh, folks who are visitors. You know, one of the things that's important in a visitor-based economy like ours is the ability to hear from the visitors and as best we can create um, an environment where they can give us input. That's a tough challenge. We've got our consultants uh, or our prospective consultants, those doing proposals now, thinking on that, it's, uh, it's challenging, but it can be done. Uh, the key, I think, to all of this is going to be, we've been calling the discussion with our residents dialogue. It's not just input. That's kind of the traditional way, you know, go to a meeting and uh, have residents or stakeholders tell us 
their thoughts, but it's, uh, I think, uh, the 21st century uh, expectation that we'll have dialogue that's repeated back and forth discussions like we're doing right now, in fact. So uh, in various venues, we will be doing that. I would expect there'll be some sort of uh, event or uh, manner of dialogue uh, at least every two or three weeks. That's a rough guess, but, uh, and it may be more often and probably will be more often as we get closer to the uh, midpoint of the comp plan and uh, have some data and some, um, some information to share. So that's sort of a quick summary of that idea. I hope that helped. Randy, can I ask you another further question? Yes, sir. Um, I didn't know if you could hear me or not. Um, Will will the county staff and or uh, the uh, citizens of the unincorporated area be at all involved in the uh, selection of a consultant and working with that assignment? Uh, yes, and Leslie Ellis, it might be a good point for you to mention the county's role in our uh, in our Estes comp plan. If I could defer to you on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, hi, Michael. We'll see you this afternoon at our Estes Valley Planning Advisory Committee, too. Um, so, yes, the county um, is working with the town. The town graciously allowed us to piggyback onto the RFP process, which is something that our purchasing department allows also. And so, uh, we have um, worked with them to create some language in the RFP to hire prospectively the same consultant team and work uh, alongside to develop engagement opportunities and steps for residents of the county and to work with the Estes Valley Planning Advisory Committee as we move forward. Uh, so we will be looking at the consultants also and then trying to develop a scope of work that uh, parallels the work that the town would be doing from April through the end of next year. So um, that's kind of an answer in a nutshell. I'm happy to dig in a little bit more if, if you'd like more information. Okay, thank you, Randy, for your information. Glad to help, Michael, thanks. So we had a very similar question asked in the Q&A um, section. Sorry, I can only do one thing at a time here. Um, from John. And John, I think we answered your question, but I'm gonna read it out loud just if anybody comes back and is watching this, um, watching this after the fact, I wanted to read it out loud um, and just to make sure that you kind of got the information you were looking for. So John said, I live in the Estes Valley and, very and I'm very concerned about the town enacting zoning regulations without input from those of us not in Estes Park, even though those regulations will indirectly or directly affect us in the county. What input will the county have on those future zoning regulations by virtue of a joint planning agreement or otherwise? And I don't know, um, Commissioner, if, if Leslie's maybe the right person to address this, if it hasn't already been addressed um, thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, I would like to um, have Leslie help me answer that. But let me just um, state, I, I believe, and, and I don't wanna speak for the whole board of county commissioners, but I plan on for us to be um, developing a very strong relationship with the town board as a board of county commissioners and as myself, and also just making sure um, that we develop some relationships and, and built um, consensus or collaboration as we go forward. Because I, I think we all want to, um, with new board and new town board, we just want to work together. And, and it's kind of an opportunity for us to um, use this time with lots of different um, challenges that I think we can make into opportunities to to work together going forward. So Leslie, if you wouldn't mind, I, I want you to kind of help answer. And I appreciate it again for you being here today. Yeah, thank you. Um, so with regard to zoning regulations, the Estes Valley or the, the town of Estes development code applies to the area within the unincorporated, within the incorporated boundary, the town boundary for the town. So any changes to zoning and um, any regulations would apply within that area or to properties that are annexed to the town. So there's not an authority to zone or regulate land beyond the town boundaries. 
Um, the Larimer County Development Code applies to the area outside of the town boundaries. And so any changes that the county commissioners would make to that code would apply to the unincorporated area. Now, um, you mentioned intergovernmental agreements, and that's something that the county frequently does with towns across the county and has had in the past with the town of Estes Park. Um, and those agreements can specify how annexation occurs and if there are other joint ways of looking at development. And so that's something that I think we've all thought of and discussed as a potential outcome of a lot of this planning work that's um, moving ahead and that we could work together on in the future. But really the first step is probably to define the plan and what the objectives of the plan are and what the future aspirations are and then come to that type of form of agreement. And, and, and new regulations if they're merited at that point. So hopefully that answers your questions. If not, I will. Thanks, Leslie. I don't know if uh, the mayor pro tem would like to comment on that or what do you think about our relationship going forward or what, do you, what are your thoughts on what uh, is shared? No, I, I think you both hit the nail on the head there. Um, I'm not ever going to try to turn away uh, or, or turn down strong relationships with our county partners. I think there's a lot more that bonds us together than separates us in the Estes Valley. Um, I think that unfortunately there's been a, a rough recent history and there's a lot of fresh wounds up here regarding um, our residents, not necessarily professionally on, uh, our, uh, um, on the government side of things. Uh, I look forward to strengthening those bonds and regaining trust with our constituents moving forward, um, whatever that happens to look like. But regarding the very first steps, I just think it's um, the, the foundation of this conversation is going to be directed by this this comprehensive plan process moving forward, and that's a that's a unified process in my mind. Thank you, Patrick. I, I appreciate that. I agree. Um, we have another question. I hope, and John, if that didn't answer your question, um, type it back in or raise your hand. So I hope we answered that. But thank you, Leslie. I, 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 and and I see Commissioner Kapal's made a comment in the chat. So thank you all for um, saying a couple of words. We do have someone who would like to speak, Commissioner. So it looks like William Brown. I have given you permission to talk, and now you just need to unmute yourself, and you're good to go. Okay. Just did that. Thank Good job. you. <laughs> uh, I am a relatively new resident to Estes Park, moved here in October. Actually, it was back in my former location having surgery on the date of the uh, evacuation, so I missed out on that. But uh, I, my question relates to the, uh, the recent uh, mountain lion attacks that occurred in, uh, and a couple of dogs were injured. And I'm just curious as to what, uh, how things are handled with respect to, you know, animals to get out of control like that and, and, you know, who handles it, what is the philosophy on how it is handled and uh, just some background on that, I'd like to understand that. That's probably for Patrick. Um, thanks. Thank you for the question. Um, <laughs> I, I really don't know too much about this personally. I would imagine that Colorado Parks and Wildlife would probably be the lead agency on, on this. Um, it's certainly unfortunate that that happened to those two animals. Uh, the first attack over by the hospital actually happened in my friend's yard. Um, and that was a, a pretty tragic and, uh, way to, way to wake up in the morning, as you could imagine. Um, so uh, uh, as far as lead agencies, uh, again, I imagine Colorado Parks and Wildlife is, is taking the lead on this. Um, I'm not sure if ATA Dan Weber has any input on this particular situation um, or if there's anybody else out there that might have a comment regarding this. No, I believe you're correct, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Marching. <clears throat> um, the Town of Estes Park doesn't have an animal control division or anything like that, and um, so we rely on our partnering agencies to handle such issues. We, of course, help spread the word, communicate about um, uh, you know these these sorts of incidents to ensure that folks remain vigilant and know what they can do to to prevent them. Um, but as far as the uh, you know handling the issues or enforcing, um, that's not uh, part of the role of the Town of Estes Park. 
And if I may, I would just add that with Larimer County, uh, we contract with the Larimer Humane Society for uh, providing animal control services. Thank you, Commissioner. And I'll just share, um, you know, I did, I am aware of that um, incident and it was very um, kind of hit me because I have a boxer as well. So I could imagine um, their um, dismay and I'm, I'm, I'm sad, so sad to hear that the other folks lost their beloved dog. And I live in unincorporated Larimer County, west of Loveland in the foothills. So um, I deal with wildlife um, a lot. I have uh, just a couple days ago, 200, two to 300 elk. Um, around my house and making it hard to drive in and out. And I had, I have bears and cubs every year, bald eagles, mountain lions, um, bobcats. Um, I, I could go down the list, deer, foxes, coyotes. Um, and so I know we had a wild a mountain lion. Um, we have one every, every once in a while. We had the, just a few minutes from my house, the rabid one that you saw in the campground. And that was just a few minutes away that they, the sheriff officer had to respond to. But um, I know when one um, just a year, it's not even two full years, um, came through um, past my house and went about a half mile, um, just well, right next to Bull Decker Reservoir. And so it was the Larimer, um, as John mentioned, Larimer Humane Society in coordination with the sheriff's office and the Carl Parks and Wildlife and all those folks that was able to uh, um, tranquilize and, and um, take that um, mountain lion to a more appropriate spot because it started going into a residential neighborhood. Um, when we ever, we have issues with any of the elk, there was one elk that had a broken leg in that herd. We always, I always, our neighborhood just always calls um, Colorado Apartment or Colorado Parks and Wildlife um, for this area. So um, I'm hoping um, that uh, Boxer fully recovers and um, tell your neighbors, I'm sorry about their, their, their dog being injured, so. Thanks. And Commissioner, just for your knowledge, I put in a couple links and Jason helped me out too. Um, the last link I put in was kind of living with wildlife from Colorado Parks and, and wildlife. And um, and you guys all know this, that, that kind of comes with the territory a little bit that um, the wildlife is gonna be here. And that's part of why we love it here so much is, is the wildlife, but we do have to learn to live with them. Um, and so there are absolutely tips and tricks that that those of us that have been here for a while know what to do when you encounter them out. I mean, I've never encountered one myself, but I've lived here long enough to know that what to do if I've encountered a mountain lion. And it's really good um, for those that maybe are new to the area to, to kind of learn and, and um, educate yourself on what to do. You know, don't go up to the elk, don't go up to the mountain lion, um, those sorts of things. But, but um, yes, William, it is definitely tragic, um, but the best we can do is educate ourselves on how to live with with our wildlife partners and friends so okay thank you you're welcome and i have my hand raised oh, uh, sorry Michelle. sorry sorry commissioner thank you william well i just um as far as william brown is concerned i just wanted to express my appreciation he reached out to me recently via email to get together and i look forward to following up with that and figuring out how we might, uh, again, I, I agree with the Mayor Pro Tem and everyone that, you know, this is about rebuilding trust with the folks we, we serve, we represent, and certainly strengthening our relationships as elected officials, you know, the Estes Park Town Trustees and the Larimer County Commissioners. So I just wanted to do that, a bit of a shout out for William Brown for reaching out. And then on the, um, on the wildlife thing, interaction, there was a good article in the Colorado, and I think a few weeks ago about the, um, the, the dramatic increase in uh, black bear encounters and, and they had some really good specific recommendations, you know, as far as what folks should do, especially folks who live in the wild line urban interface. And I never really thought about it, but as an example, you know, we have a bird feeder here in, in, uh, in Fort Collins in the backyard in Martinez Park. And the other day I saw deer tracks. So the deer have come in and there has been a mountain lion nearby and we've seen black bears, but I never really thought about they're suggesting you should bring the bird feeders in at night because uh, that's another thing that can attract uh, animals, wildlife like black bears. Commissioner, we do have one more hand raised. Thanks, Michelle. So, uh huh. David, I am going to give you permission to speak and you just need to unmute yourself and you're good to go. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you for holding this meeting. 
it's nice to hear everybody and to learn what's going on, particularly in the time of coronavirus. Oh, David, I think you're going in and out on us a little bit. Let me try to get a little louder. Is this better? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Um, what I was going to say was the first was thank you for the meeting. I appreciate everyone taking their time to do this. The second thing I was going to say is I appreciate Larimer County being flexible with regard to jury duty for folks who have uh, loved ones or people living in the house with them that have serious underlying conditions. That's really appreciated. And the third thing I was going to say was I'm disappointed with how the coronavirus is going in Estes Park. We're about 30 plus percent higher on a per 100,000 basis than either Fort Collins or Loveland. In fact, only Berkeley has even has a worse percent uh, or number per 100,000. And being 30 to 35 percent higher than Loveland and, and Fort Collins really gives me some pause. And, and I know everybody's trying very hard, but we're a tourist town. We have a lot of people come who, as friends of mine have said, in the tourist business, they often leave their brains somewhere else. And I'm disappointed that we can't do better, and I hope we will do better in the future. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, I know um, it is hard uh, with visitors coming from out of town, and I know Estes Park has all the signs and tries very hard to enforce their um, mask wearing, especially downtown. I don't. I know as a county, we're we're trying to be very um, proactive with social media and advertising to encourage everyone to follow the guidelines. Um, our health department's been working very hard. Um, I don't know if the mayor pro tem wants to um, chime in on that, that comment. Um, I, I don't necessarily have uh, too much more to say. I, I, I tend to agree with David. Um, our numbers that we have in Estes, uh, you could say one is too many, quite honestly. Unfortunately, there have been 10 souls lost in the Estes Valley uh, to COVID-19. And it's unfortunate that um, we couldn't do more and we didn't do more. Um, so moving forward as vaccinations continue to roll out, um, I'm optimistic for sunnier days ahead and hopefully um, um, we can continue to be diligent in Estes Park and try to inform and educate our visitors as they come from all across the country not only to visit us, but of course, Rocky Mountain National Park uh, and try to encourage them, whether whatever angle that ultimately we need to take, whether it be um, purely a, a health angle, but understanding that um, by staying healthy and by uh, um, uh, following uh, social distancing guidelines are ultimately able to protect our, our industries up here, our economy, our livelihoods. So um, yeah, I, I sympathize with uh, David very much. I agree with him, uh, uh, everything that he says. So I certainly hope that uh, we can do better. All right. We have one more hand raised. Kent Smith. Kent, just unmute yourself and you should be able to speak. I just wanted to back, uh, piggyback on what uh, Patrick was saying, and uh, I do know that though, from what I've been reading about the statistics, uh, the evacuation uh, kind of put us at a, a disadvantage, and we got a, a lot more spread here at the same time. Having said that, I'm glad that uh, we've gotten our first shot, second one's on March 5th, and hi, Jody, hi, John, hi. Neighbor, <laughs> talk to you later. Thank you, Kent. And uh, and I, I want to just say, yes, I, I know one death is just too many. Um, I happen to know um, three um, special folks in my life that, um, well, they weren't, they were, you know, people I've been working with and volunteering with, and they all passed away from COVID in December in a, in a week's time of, of each other. And um, one of them called me when she got her positive test and I still hear that conversation in my head. So I, I, I hear you and I, I feel, I, I understand. And I, I, I just implore everyone to, to hopefully everyone will, even with the vaccines coming out to still wear your mask and socially distance and, and the lights at the end of the tunnel, but we have to be diligent and help encourage our friends and neighbors to be diligent as well. So 
Um, thanks, Michelle. Is there any other questions or people with hands raised or? Not at this moment. So this might be a good time if you haven't hit or if you there's a topic you haven't talked about yet or anything else you wanted to wrap up, this is probably the best time to do it. Looks like we have about five minutes left. So we're getting close to the end anyway. Well, um, you know, there's lots of things we could talk about today, um, but I just wanted to kind of make sure um, that you all knew about the housing survey. Um, I wanted to make sure we um, kind of talked a little bit about that comprehensive plan. That's why I thank Leslie and, and Jason and Randy for being here today. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, maybe it's not on your radar being up in Essence, but we are um, working on um, bringing those Larimer County's oil and gas regulations up to the state, the state um, um, brought up the regulations and as the state law says, we have to be, our regulations have to be where the state law is. And then um, and we as a board are looking where we'd like to maybe go above and beyond that. And so there's a survey um, that I think is still open until the end of March um, that would love to have your input. Um, yes, thank you, Leslie. It's open until the end of March. Um, so I'd love to have your feedback um, because air quality and all that impacts all of us. And we've had some pretty um, um, not great air quality the last uh, week, which is due to the cold and other, lots of factors. But I, I want to just kind of have that on your radar. We will be having a work session on Monday, um, I believe at 1.30. That's televised that you can um, listen in if you want to. Uh, I encourage you to do that. And so I want to make sure that's on your radar. If you wouldn't mind um, typing in the chat any topics or things you'd like for us to further talk about at future uh, events, um, I would love to have your feedback. So real quick before we have closing comments, uh, Michelle, could we just put up that survey real quick? I want to give everyone's input about what they see us going forward for community conversations. Absolutely, Commissioner. So the first question is, um, and we do realize this is a little biased considering it's midweek. Um, but we'll ask this in different formats. So what is the best day of the week for community meetings for you guys? Um, so please go ahead and let us know. I think you can choose multiple days if, if all days work for you. Um, so we'll give you, it looks like we have eight of 12 have voted, nine of 12. All right, it looks like it's slowing down a little bit. So just about five more seconds and we'll, and the polling, we're almost there. All right, so we're gonna end the polling. It looks like Thursday, which is today. So go figure, right? Um, we'll share the results real quick. Um, but you guys kind of midweek, you guys like midweeks and you wanna keep your weekends to plan outdoors and I don't blame you at all. So we will stop share results and we'll go to the next question. Next question, we're gonna launch it. What time of the day works best for community conversations? So um, we do have some community conversations in other communities that start very bright and early. Um, and then we have others that we do at all times of the day. So what works for you guys in Estes Park? And again, you can click multiple options if you like both early mornings and late in the evening. All right, looks like 10 of 12 have voted. We're just looking for a few more, 11 of 12. All right, 11 of 11, we are ready to end polling. So we're gonna end polling. Um, mid morning, so kind of a 10 o'clock, people liked midday as well. You guys are not early birds. So um, <laughs> Jody, keep that in mind too, but, but they will, oh, I forgot to share. So that's what you guys can see. That's what we got, Jody. Great, thanks, Michelle. And again, um, I know this is just a you know small sample size. Um, you know, have your neighbors and friends. Um, they can email me. Um, Michelle can put my email and my phone number um, in the chat. So feel free to uh, comment on you know future um, events. This is just the beginning. I know we we covered kind of a broad brush of topics, but um, um, we're looking to make these so they're. Um, helpful to you and engaging. I want to thank um, Leslie Ellis for being here and Randy and Jason, um, J Randy Hunt and Jason and Dom Weber. Did I pronounce that correct? I hope Dom Weber. I apologize. Please. Great. And um, and I, I want to thank Michelle for facilitating. Randy, thank you for being here. I'm sure we'll be getting to know each other 
um, in the in the weeks and months ahead. Um, I'd like to um, allow, uh, let uh, um, Mayor Pro Tem Marching uh, say a, a note and a closing marks and then Commissioner Kafalos and then I'll wrap it up and honor everyone's time today. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner, for hosting this event with Larimer County. Uh, John, I certainly appreciate your time. I understand it's very valuable right now. Um, uh, Jason and Randy, thanks for tagging along today. Uh, certainly appreciate the support. Um, to Larimer County residents and, and all the Estes Valley residents, I should say, um, I really want to reiterate uh, our, our board has uh, every intention on maintaining strong partnerships, uh, not only on a political standpoint with our partners here, but also uh, with our neighbors and our community. So um, thank you again for the opportunity to share some thoughts today. Um, and I look forward to uh, strengthening our, our um, uh, uh, communication and our, and our uh, partnerships moving forward. I think that, um, Larimer County has a wealth of uh, expertise uh, on the staff and uh, elected uh, positions right now. And um, we all stand to benefit from that. So thank you very much again for the opportunity to be a part of this today and never hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Marching, Patrick, I appreciate it. And again, I, I really value your time. Commissioner Kofalas, um, would really love you to have a few words here. Yes, they will be a few. Uh, just to say thank you to everyone, uh, certainly the folks from the Estes Valley participating, but I appreciate being included in this opportunity to reconnect with you all. It's been a while since I've been up, up to Estes Park in the Estes Valley. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity to reconnect and I look forward to more opportunities and um, uh, I wish you all well, yes. Thank you, Commissioner Kafalis. It's uh, great to uh, have you here today. And I, I know um, you and treasure outdoor hiking and, and, and the Estes Valley is, as much as I do. So um, I wanna thank you all for joining us today. Um, please let uh, your neighbors and friends in the Valley and, this, and, and anyone from any part of the county is welcome to any community conversation that we have at any time. So um, if you wanna learn about what's happening in other areas or what their concerns on, I welcome you to um, join that um, those conversations. You can find those on our Board of County Commissioners website. The county website is phenomenal. There's so much information. You can peruse that and look at all kinds of things you can learn about. Um, and so I wanna encourage you to do that. Um, and I, I just wanna tell you, I, I value your input and your time and I'm available and accessible and um, my information's in the chat and I look forward to hearing you all and we'll have some more events in person up in Estes as, as, as we can going forward. And I look forward to uh, strengthening our partnerships with the town board and the staff in, in the Estes Valley. And I'll see some of you as I'm the liaison for the Estes Valley Advisory Planning Com Commission. Did I get that? I, I apologize to everybody. I've got a lot of acronyms on my plate right now. And I look forward, we have a meeting today and I look forward to seeing some of you this afternoon. I, I wanna thank you again and have a great afternoon. Stay warm and stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks stay everyone. Well. Thank you.